Okay, Robin, I always start every interview this way, just to give me your first and last name and your official title. Robin, R-O-B-I-N, Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S. I am co-anchor of ABC's Good Morning America. Awesome. You know, you're here in Memphis for the Methodist Cancer Luncheon, mm -hmm. and this may seem like an obvious question because of your own health issues, but why this particular event? Oh, I vowed that I was going to, when I was healthy enough, to thank people, to thank people who are helping those, those who are underserved, underinsured. Mm. It's difficult as it is to go through something like this, but to not have the resources to be able to fight it. And this center makes sure that everyone, everyone has a fighting chance. And I'm, I'm Southern, that's, that's part of it too. My nephew used to play for the Grizzlies, Lawrence Roberts, go Grizz, go Grizz. He played here in 2005 to 2007, worked in Nashville as well. So this, this area of the country um, has a special place in my heart, but the center in particular for what they're doing for uh, the community and, and, and you, just, you just wanna be able to fight. You, you touched on Memphis, um, basically, uh, a little bit, but I believe in a speech in New York, you said that you love Memphis. What is oh, it? I love Memphis. Oh, we, we did the show down here back in the day. <laughs> uh, Sam Champion. We were on Beale. Beale, I did say that right, right? Yes. Okay, we were yes. there. Okay. And, uh, uh, so what's that guy's name? Well, yeah, Justin Timberlake. Yes, yes that was, one, yeah, JT. Yeah, yeah JT. <laughs> uh, we had a great time. If I don't get barbecue, before I leave here, before I get on that plane, if I don't get so if I don't get barbecue, uh, yeah. it's a, but it's the spirit here. It's mm. it's uh, the wonderful um, spirit, the people, the culture. Uh, beautiful flying in this morning was absolutely gorgeous, and it's not cold. People had earmuffs on. Really, come on now. It really wasn't. I was freezing. I, oh, come I have to tell on. you, I was freezing but this I morning. I remember that about living living down in this area. Um, that if it you know dips below fifty, it's like gotta pull out the. Yes. Yeah, it's all right. I believe it was 07, If I get the year wrong, forgive me. You were diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. When you got that diagnosis, what was the first thing that went through your mind? When I was diagnosed with breast breast cancer in two thousand and seven. When you hear those words, you have cancer, mm -hmm. you think you're gonna die. Mm. You just think that, you think that. You, you do, that's, that's the initial thought. And then for me, it was, I'm gonna fight. And I wanna be able to um, have, it's very difficult for a woman of color mm -hmm. to be told you're less likely to get breast cancer, but if you do, you're more likely to die than someone else. What are you supposed to do with that, with that type of information? And so when that was shared with me, I, was, I, I um, went, into, went into fight mode. The athlete in me um, said, I'm gonna approach cancer as an opponent, and I did that. But I'm very, very grateful for the doctors, nurses, technicians, the love, the support, um, people, hashtag Team Robin, um, friends who I, I still wear it to this day, a bracelet that was made mm. that has the key words for the prayer of protection, light, mm. love, power, presence. Um, this is a constant reminder to me. And people sometimes say, why do you still wear it? You know, your cancer is no longer detectable in your body, and I'm grateful for that, but I want to remember. Yeah. You don't go through something like this. Everybody's got something, and it's also to learn from that something that we've all gone through. So you had surgery, mm -hmm. six rounds of chemo, yeah, or eight, then mm -hmm. six and a half uh, weeks of radiation. How difficult was that process? It was grueling. It was grueling, and it was grueling to do that publicly. But you know what? A gentleman stopped me on my way here to talk with you, and he said, thank you for going on the air with a bald head. Mm -hmm. He said, my mama went through cancer, and it meant something to him to see me do that. And everything I did in sharing was to help, was to be able to, um, to demystify some things. Uh, I never knew what it was gonna be like to have chemotherapy and to lose my hair. And do you know that some women will not go through treatment because they don't wanna lose their hair? Right. 
And I get it. Hair defines us. Mm -hmm. And I've had, oh gosh, if you go through all the, the years of me in television, you'll see all different kinds. I had a mullet. I had all these different hairstyles. Yeah. Uh, but as India Ari said, we are not our hair. Yes. I am not my hair. I am the soul that lives within. And um, I, I, I'm just, uh, it was very difficult though um, to do that, but I thought it was very important. And that's why it's important for me to, to be here in Memphis and to go around the country and to, to be a shining example of this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Yes, biblical. When you kick cancer behind with breast <laughs> cancer, you're you're so southern. I am a very southern. I know. That's southern so cute. I know. 2012. You find out that you have MDS, a disease of the bone marrow. I know that you are a Christian and a woman of faith. Was your faith shaken? That is a very good question and a fair question. Was I angry? Yes, but you know what? He can take it. Mm. He can take it. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, but to say my faith was shaken, no, I never lost faith. I got mad. Mm. You know, you go through it and, and a lot of people, um, cancer returns a second and third time. Um, you become angry, but I never, I never doubted. I never doubted my faith and I never um, questioned why. Um, I just went back to what my mother said, everybody's got something everybody's got something and my something is no more or no less than anybody else's um, and it has it, it tested my faith and it just reaffirmed to me that I am a believer mm -hmm. that the best is yet to come and sometimes it takes it takes a lot of courage yes. to believe the best is yet to come it does indeed mm -hmm. you touched on this briefly mm -hmm. basketball tennis you played I mean, you're one of three women from your school that scored a thousand points. You had like a thousand. Girlfriend did her homework. Re rebounds. Girlfriend did her <laughs> homework. Excuse me, not even looking at her notes. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Your ma jersey yes, was yes, retired. You've yes. been inducted into the Women's um, Basketball Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I know that you are a competitor. You cannot get those points mm -hmm. without being one. And when you were diagnosed both times, did you say, I am a competitor? I am going to win and I am going to kick cancer's butt. I'm not kidding, you're good. Yes, I face it as an opponent. I said, cancer, you are an opponent and I'm going to beat you and I'm going to have these great coaches, my doctors and nurses. I'm going to have a game plan and that was the treatment plan and I faced it like an athlete. I faced it and that's why I have to say, when I was first diagnosed, I wasn't going to share that because there was some shame. Really? There was. There was something like, I, but I've done everything right. You know, I, I don't smoke. I'm a moderate drinker. I've, I've been athletic all my life. And it was, it was the good Lord's way of saying, you know what? It doesn't matter. But what my doctors told me is that because I had done all the right things that helped me fight it, didn't prevent it from happening, but gave me a better chance to have a positive outcome. And, um, I would have liked to have learned this lesson a different way, but this is how um, it was for me. But I really believe my athletic background mm -hmm. and just the thinking of an athlete really helped me in this regard. I do have to look at my notes for this because okay. I, I, I want to quote you. You posted on Facebook, at this moment, I am at peace and filled with joy and gratitude. I am grateful to God. Mm -hmm. my doctors and nurses for my restored health. I am grateful for my entire family, my longtime girlfriend mm -hmm. Amber, and friends as we prepare to celebrate a glorious new year mm. together. Yeah. You're at that starting point to where you are about to experience another new year. Yeah. But the reason why I read that post was, is basically it was the first time that you had ever mentioned your sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. How difficult was it to tell your truth? It wasn't difficult at all because everybody who meant anything in my life had known for decades. So it, it wasn't the, 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 the struggle uh, that some people might think. But what I am most pleased about is that when I did that, it was in the context, I'm, I'm just grateful, I'm blessed. And Amber and I are so grateful that people have received it so well because of the manner in which I shared it. And it wasn't on the cover of People yes. Magazine with the big headline or anything like that. It was just in the context of my personal 
Facebook posting to say just what you read. I am so blessed and Amber is one of the blessings in my life. And I had to ask for her permission. I mean, she's been out with her family even before I was out. Yes. You know, she's, yeah. That wasn't the issue. But her life, people don't understand that. When you put your partner in the spotlight, their life changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she can't go out with her hair all over her head and, and things mm -hmm. like that. But it's not even that. It's, it's um, what always has struck me is that if somebody in the public eye is straight and they choose not to share about their life, oh, they're being private. Mm -hmm. When a gay person does it, oh, you're in the closet. I was in the closet. Everybody knew. Everybody. Bob Iger knew, the head yeah. of Disney. Yeah. Everybody yes, knew. I know that name. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know what? And, and I'm very, my sister been a longtime reporter down in New Orleans, yes. Sally Ann. Yes. Sister Sally. Yes. And people remember her from the ESPYs because she was like, whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop. And she thanked me because so many young people from the South who are not able to share their sexual orientation. Yes were thanking the family because I was photographed with Amber at my niece's wedding. And we were there, like my sister and brother were there with their spouses and boyfriend and girlfriends. And this young man, person said, thank you. Um, again, just like I have shared with my battle with cancer, my journey, it's all to help. It's all to not shine a light on myself, but if some small way I can make somebody not feel alone, yes. not feel like they are uh, alone in any way, mm -hmm. that, uh, that they have somebody that's, that's there with them. I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. I want to take you home. I'm a proud Mississippian. You're a McGee? Mississippian. McGee, Mississippi. I did my homework too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was with the ABC ONO in North Carolina, Raleigh yes. Durham, when Hurricane mm -hmm. Katrina hit. Yeah. And right before I boarded the plane, I saw your report from past Christianity. And as a journalist, you see death and destruction almost every day. But you started crying, you wept. Where did that emotion come from? It came from seeing my mother less than 30 minutes before I went on the air. Mm -hmm. And up until that time, not knowing if she was alive, not knowing the condition of um, our home, her health, my sister, my mother was unable for health reasons to evacuate. So that emotion came from knowing that people were watching that morning, feeling what I had just felt. People were watching, wondering about their loved ones. And I knew the pain that they were going through. So it was, there were tears of gratitude that my mama was okay, but also tears of, oh my gosh, I know what it feels like. And it has made me a better person and journalist, even with the recent mass shootings. Yes. I just can't report them like business as usual. Oh, this is just the new normal. Uh, just the other day on Good Morning America, I became, um, I came, I became a, a bit emotional because I'm like, no, we got to stop this. And I think it stems from covering Katrina as I did and being vulnerable and feeling I was going to get fired. Mm. Thought when I did that, and, you, no, yeah. there's no crying in television, mm -hmm. especially network television. Right. You can't do right. that. Well, you've got to remain objective. You're a journalist. No, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so grateful of all the accolades, all the accolades, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of them. When I was, when I was voted most trusted, most trusted, that said to me, I'm doing something right because I trust the person at home to be able to make up their own mind that I can just be myself, give them unfiltered information and trust them to make their own cho choices. So I'm very, um, it's just a gratifying feeling that I get to, I get to be who I am. I love that because I'm Southern and I have that Southern drawl, but I try to be true to myself in the area that I'm in. So I understand exactly yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, you feel me. Yeah. yeah. So you, you brought up family briefly. Mm -hmm. In a speech, you said that your parents gave you the three Ds. <laughs> Can you tell our viewers what the three Ds well, are? Because you know, usually you're taught the three R's. Yes. Reading, writing, right. arithmetic. In the Roberts household, it was the three Ds. You know, you've got to be, you got to be determined. Yes. It's determination. It's discipline and it's the Lord. 
<laughs> I love the that three, when I saw the it. The 3D. Yes, the 3D. Oh, people are really drawn to that. And that yeah. was in my, in my family. My father was military, Tuskegee Airmen. Yes. I'm very proud of that. My mother was the first in her family to go to college and um, was uh, on the board of State Board of Education in, in our home state yes. of Mississippi. And they just, they just, and they, you know what, they were all about discipline. They're all about, you got to be determined, but they're also, it all mm. comes down to the Lord. It all comes down to your belief, your belief in yourself, the belief above, belief in the person sitting to your right, sitting to your left. And I think if we had more of that, and as my mama said, we have more in common than not. So why don't we focus on our, on our similarities? And that's love mm. of family. That's love of, uh, of being respected and and uh, I, I think sometimes we just spend so much time focusing on those things that, are, that make us different. And that's, that's great that we're different. Why don't we focus on our similarities? Why don't we focus on those things that are, that are good in our lives? Awesome. I'd like for you um, to finish these sentences for me. Okay. But before I do that, I just want to ask you about your three books. From the Heart, Seven Rules to Live By. Mm -hmm. From the Heart, Eight Rules to Live By and everybody's got something, because we all do. And I am, I, I wanna write another one. I wanna write one with my mommyisms. Mm -hmm. You know, when I talk, because everybody's got something, it's something my mom taught me, and when you strut, you stumble. Mm -hmm. um, th this little things, and she, when we were talking, you know, here it is, Christmas time, and everyone's all worried about presents, you know, getting the right presents. And my mother said it's about being present, mm -hmm. not the presents. That's it's awesome. It's about being present. Um, but these books, um, you know, for I never thought I'd write a book, and I was writing one, Seven Rules of Live By. It's all about, you know, uh, position yourself for success, you know, things I learned through playing sports. Mm -hmm. And then during the course of that book, uh, before it had even um, been out a year, was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I, people said, oh, you got to write a book on, on cancer. I'm like, no, because it's no more than a chapter mm -hmm. in my life story. So I added a chapter and uh, make your mess your message. Another mm -hmm. one of my yes. mommyisms, make your mess your message. And then when I was diagnosed with NDS, myelodysplastic mm -hmm. syndrome, which few people knew about, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to be, I, I wanted, I didn't have a book. There was no book for me to read about it. So I, I put that down um, on paper and entitled it, be, Everybody's Got Something, because just think about that. I had MDS. The chances are you'll never have MDS, mm -hmm. but I don't know what your something is, but I know you got yes, something. Yes, I have something. I know. We all do. Yeah, Trust we all me, do. We, we, have all, we, we all do. We all, and you know what? You know what? If everybody threw their something, if everybody threw their problem or issue, what they were going through, everybody threw it theirs in a big pile in the middle. You take yours back. Mm -hmm. You look and go, oh my God, he's going through that. Oh, I'll, you know, oh man, look at tall, slim over there. What? He's. I didn't know that. You know what? I'm going to take my issue. I'm going to take my something back. Doesn't seem so bad when you see what everybody else got going on. Right. I've been given my two minute cue, mm -hmm. so here we go. Okay. All right. Is this word associate or just, just finish the word? Yes, finish, finish the sentence, sentence, please. Okay. Robin Roberts is blessed. My biggest fear is I'm not afraid anymore. Awesome. I'm sorry. Don't I'm be not sorry. A, I'm not afraid anymore. You go through what I've gone through. I never thought I'd be you know, I love my mom and my daddy. I miss them, and I thought I would never be anything without them. And to know that I'm even stronger mm. and I feel them, I'm not. I'm not fearful. Fearful? You making my eyelashes come off before <laughs> I speak? I'm sorry, don't do that. Because I'll <laughs> okay, start. Okay, 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 okay. Blank brings me the most joy. Oh, that is blank brings me the most joy. Uh, people. People bring me the most joy. God is. Good all the time. Mm. I'll second that. <laughs> Did I miss anything that you want to share with the viewers? Um, you know, I, I wanted to, to share, you have a lot of good going on in this community. And I know that you all have your issues, and, and um, as anyone does, you've got your something as well. I just hope that we take time with all that's going on in the world and the fear um, that is real, that... I hope that you have dinner with your family. Mm -hmm. I hope we go back to dinner time. I hope, I hope that we go back to looking, no, looking at each other in the eye when you're walking down Beale and go, how you doing? How you doing today? Um, I want us to, I, I, I want that. I well, want that. let me just say from one Mississippi woman to another Mississippi woman, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to chat with me. And as you phrased on ESPN, 
I'll leave you with this. Go on with your bad self. <laughs> God bless you, Robin. Thank oh, you. Oh, my goodness. I'm so